Hello people, in this video we want to look at the causes of secondary hypertension. What do you mean by hypertension? Hypertension means the blood pressure is more, correct? How much more? Greater than 140 systolic and 90 diastolic. Greater than 140 by 90 is hypertension, right? Now, what cause? What is the cause for uh, hypertension? So, the blood pressure should be more. Why will the blood pressure be more? Blood pressure will be more if the so this is your artery in this the blood pressure is more why is the blood pressure more because the heart is pumping more cardiac output is more okay or the resistance is more that means if uh, this uh, vessel is like this the pressure will be more let's say if it vasodilates then the pressure will drop okay so the resistance systemic vascular resistance vasodilation will decrease the blood pressure vasoconstriction will increase the blood pressure so this much you have understood right so these are the causes of hypertension now what is uh, primary or essential hypertension basically there is no underlying cause that becomes primary or essential hypertension you can just blame it on the mind or something basically they're saying there's no cause systemic or any uh, such cause in your body to treat what is secondary hypertension means secondary hypertension means there is a cause in your body so the cause mainly can be kidney okay the main cause can be kidney or it can be any other endocrine system like your thyroid, your adrenal glands, uh, your pituitary gland, mainly adrenal gland, you remember, okay. Other things, let us look at. One by one, let us look at, guys, now. Let's get started with the list, okay. So, alcohol. So, what happens in alcohol? Why does blood pressure increase in an alcoholic? Because he'll have less nitric oxide. So, there will be uh, vascular, no, the blood vessels will not be proper. There can be vasodilation causing uh, sorry, less vasodilation. So, vasodilation is not there. Less vasodilation. So, vasoconstriction. What will happen if the blood vessels constrict? Very good. If the blood vessels constrict, there will be, blood pressure will be more. Very good. Now, let's go to the next one here. Obesity. What will happen in obesity? Obesity again, the blood vessels, there is endothelial dysfunction. Endothelium means the inner layer, right? Endo, inside. Endothelial dysfunction is there. Again, there is vasoconstriction. When there is vasoconstriction, what will happen? Hypertension. Very good. Pregnancy. What happens in pregnancy? You have seen this in preeclampsia videos, right? Hypertension and pregnancy and all that. So basically, again here, there's endothelial dysfunction due to thromboxane, etc. There'll be vasospasm. There'll be anti-angiogenic factors like that. Uh, this one, you remember soluble FMS like tyrosine kinase 1. So there's more of that. So uh, if this is more soluble FMS like tyrosine kinase 1, there'll be vasospasm. If there's vasospasm, that means vasoconstriction. Because of vasoconstriction, what will happen? Come on, hypertension. Very good. So let's get back here to our hypertension. We have seen pregnancy, then renal disease. What will happen if there is kidney disease? Kidney wants blood, right? It wants to uh, filter the blood. That's its job. If there is uh, some, see this is kidney and it's getting the blood and the blood it is trying to filter and it is going to make urine. Correct. For some reason, let us say there is problem in the kidney. The kidney has some problem. Now what will happen? It will think that there is some problem that it is not able to get the blood to create more urine. So what it will do, this renin angiotensin aldosterone system will start making the blood pressure become high and high. It will start telling, make the blood pressure more. I'm not getting blood at all. Okay. So this is the renin angiotensin aldosterone uh, system, right? Have you seen, you know that? This one people, <clears throat> the kidney is making renin. Then it is getting converted in, it, it renin converts angiotensin no gen to angio, angiotensin 1 that becomes angiotensin 2 because of what the lungs give some enzyme. Then this angiotensin 2 will finally, the old whole target is to elevate the blood pressure. Okay, so hypertension. Now let's continue, kidney over. Now we are done with uh, so many things. Now let us go to endocrine diseases. Endocrine disease is very important to know. Few chromocytoma, that is your adrenal medulla tumor what will this uh, this do it will release more catecholamines so more catecholamines means hypertension so you've already seen this in our pheochromocytoma video let's hope uh, look at this above the kidney you have adrenal glands there's a tumor in the medulla medullary tumor that is inside a middle medullary tumor so what will happen these will make a lot of Catecholamines, catecholamines means, what are catecholamines like norepinephrine, epinephrine, dopamine. So basically what is the job of uh, epinephrine or adrenaline? Vasoconstriction, right? So it will cause vasoconstriction hypertension. 
This is a surgically correctable hypertension, guys. Please, let's add that point here. More catecholamines like adrenaline. This is a surgically correctable hypertension. Okay, then we'll go to Cushing syndrome. Look at all this. Okay, Cushing syndrome, hyperaldosteronism, all these. Okay, uh, these three. So basically, again, this is something to do with the adrenal gland only. They are making lot of adrenal hormones, right? So basically, what will happen? More um, uh, mineralocorticoid, more glucocorticoid. Aldosterone is more. What is the job of aldosterone to do sodium retention in the body? If sodium is retained in your body. You will have more. You have more what? Water. So water is more in your body. Let me explain again. This is your kidney. So what will happen here? There is aldosterone. Let's say. <clears throat> this aldosterone will tell the kidney to reabsorb sodium so when sodium gets reabsorbed who else will get reabsorbed water so uh, water always swallows sodium it loves sodium wherever water goes uh, sodium goes water will go so your body will have so much of water now what will happen if water is more your blood volume will be more your blood will have more water you can say right so the volume of blood will become more so what will happen your blood pressure will become more okay so all this is the problem with all this these three hyperaldosteronism this one cushing syndrome hyperaldosteronism hyperaldosteronism same thing sodium water retention okay now let us come to this one para hyperparathyroidism basically this is a very strange thing because thyrotoxicosis also they are saying will lead to hypertension hyperparathyroidism also they are saying it will lead to hypertension hyperparathyroidism what happens is basically look at this image here so basically parathyroid hormone will increase the peripheral resistance so what will happen if there is resistance yes peripheral resistance arterial resistance what is there the resistance of the blood vessels means the blood pressure will be more then come to <clears throat> the next one after hyperthyroidism acromegaly acromegaly means this more growth hormone this will again promote water sodium and water retention okay primary hypothyroidism and high thyrotoxicosis these two are kind of opposite isn't it thyrotoxicosis you can say there will be tachycardia etc and the heart will be pumping more <clears throat> so hypertension kind of a thing but what happens in hypothyroidism basically this is very unique they are saying mostly the diastolic blood pressure will become more okay but this is bad right diastolic is Uh, becoming more and this is again because of peripheral vascular resistance uh, so are you getting it guys Hi primary hypothyroidism and hyperthyroidism that is thyrotoxicosis also both ways and even hyperparathyroidism all three they are blaming for uh, hypertension okay then congenital adrenal hyperplasia i think this should have been on top right congenital adrenal hyperplasia again that's again to do with the adrenal gland only this one and this one also 11 beta <coughs> hydroxy steroid dehydrogenase deficiency this all this again is re uh, related to your adrenal gland just look at this one 11 beta hydroxy steroid hydrogenase deficiency actually this uh, dehydrogenase is converting active steroids into inert steroids and this keto reductase is converting inert into active there is some deficiency in this dehydrogenase so what will happen if there is no dehydrogenase the active steroids will increase what happens if steroids are more we already told you right if steroids are more blood pressure will become more okay so sodium water retention basically it's this cortisol and all are stress hormones so its point is to increase the blood pressure okay so this everything about steroids and adrenal gland we have put here then parathyroid hypothyroidism and thyrotoxicosis everything thyroid thyroid will put in one place acromegaly um, <clears throat> we told you this now come to liddell's syndrome see liddell syndrome is something about the kidney it causes the kidney to excrete potassium but retain too much sodium so again this is sodium water retention in liddell liddell syndrome have you ever heard of liddell liddell syndrome it can cause hypertension okay now we are done with uh, in this entire thing you can see we are done with alcohol obesity pregnancy renal disease endocrine now last two are left here drugs and coagulation of iota drugs so basically the person he might be taking some drugs which is causing hypertension so you need to check what is the drug he is taking probably he is just taking too too much of sodium or salt in his diet that you should check probably he is eating too much of pickle and papad and all these um, Uh, salt excess salt containing food okay or he is having some ex, uh, consumption of paracetamol acetaminophen as simple as that acetaminophen is paracetamol right yeah at uh, mbbs level you should not ask that basic question right okay 
acetaminophen, paracetamol. Very good. Now let us look at the other drugs. See, so, what and all we understand, we will tick off in this. Okay. I can understand steroids. Very easy. Steroids. Immunosuppressants again, something like steroids. Okay. Testosterone, estrogen. Everything is steroidal. Very good. This we finished. This one. Tyrosine kinase inhibitors, angiogenesis inhibitors. The same thing. You saw in the preeclampsia, right? Anti-angiogen factor that, um, what was that? Uh, S, S, SF something. Yeah, SFLT, soluble FMS like tyrosine kinase. All these are going to increase the blood pressure. Okay, then they are taking um, some uh, licorice. Licorice is some, sounds like a, some liquor or chocolate. If they're eating that, they'll have high blood pressure. <clears throat> then look at these, okay, thyroid hormone. Obviously, you will say thyroid. Just now we told you thyroid, high thyrotoxicosis. <clears throat> then look at this category here, okay, this is very nice. Whenever they are taking this nasal decongestants or migraine medicines, <clears throat> this will cause vasodilation, sorry, vasoconstriction. Migraine is because of the throbbing type of headache because there is too much of blood supply, right? That's why they will get vasoconstrictor. Nasal decongestant, again, it doesn't want the blood supply to the uh, mucous membrane, right? It, it, when you put nasal decongestant like pseudoephedrine into your nose, it will cause vasoconstriction, local local vasoconstriction. So, but systemic effects can cause uh, hypertension, okay? Then, what about some weight loss medication that can cause it, they are saying. Then, uh, ephedra and many herbal products. Actually, ephedra is a treatment for hypotension. So, obviously, what will it cause? hypertension okay and especially in our post uh, anesthesia or if people have hypotension they are giving ephedra looks like so that can lead to hypertension okay so again alcohol we already saw right alcohol you already know that it will cause right testosterone estrogen don't forget birth control pill guys you should not forget birth control pills birth control pills they are, if they are having hormones again they are all going to increase the blood pressure okay what is that down here last? After drugs, coactation of iota. Coarctation of iota. Let's look at this one here, this image. Coarctation of iota means what has happened. You can see this is the iota in the red. There is a defect here. It's kind of squeezed out. No? Like a rubber band they put here. Squeezed. There's a defect here. Coarctation of iota. So what will happen if there is a, if your heart is trying to pump out the blood and the iota has a constriction like that. So, in the head and all, there will be uh, more pressure, okay. And here, below this coactation of iota, there will be low pressure. Very interesting hypertension these people will have, right? So, in this video, we have covered the causes of secondary hypertension. Alcohol, obesity, pregnancy, kidney disease, endocrine, like adrenal, lot of issues, then parathyroid hormone, thyroid hormone, acromegaly, growth hormone, Liddell syndrome, then drugs, a lot of drugs we saw like um, uh, steroids, testosterone, birth control pills, um, and nasal decongestants, then uh, what are those? Migraine medication, ephedras, if they are eating a lot of salt, angiogenesis inhibitors, alcohol, caffeine, uh, thyroid hormone if they are taking etc etc. If they are taking erythropoietin, right, that means they are making too much of blood. That means RBCs or they are making a lot of blood. So, there can be high blood volume leading to high blood pressure. And then coactation of iota in this what will happen um, before the, the IO, uh, before the coactation there will be high blood pressure and uh, below the uh, coactation of iota there will be low blood pressure. Secondary hypertension means there will be a cause for it, okay, which you have to fix. That's it. Bye-bye.